The hospital is a place where none of us like to be. It's cold and uncomfortable, but we feel a sense of safety knowing that we are in the hands of doctors and nurses. There have been several cases of nurses breaking that trust and murdering their patients. Welcome back to Local Cryptid. Today we will be discussing the cases of three killer nurses. So if you like true crime and altogether weird stuff, go ahead and stab that subscription button as well as slash that notification bell to be alerted every time I post a new case. Gwendolyn Graham and Kathy Wood met at the Alpine Manor Nursing Home in Walker, Michigan in 1984. The two women worked as nurses' aides and became quick friends. The friendship turned into a tumultuous romantic relationship shortly after. Both lovers felt that the other partner would leave the relationship, so they formed a murderous love bond. In January of 1987, Gwen entered the room of a female patient who had Alzheimer's disease and smothered her with a washcloth. Kathy was the lookout. When the patient was found dead the next morning, no autopsy was conducted because it appeared to be a natural death. Over the next few months, Gwen would kill four more patients. Most of the victims were between 65 and 97 and suffered from Alzheimer's. The two wanted to make a game out of the murders and pick out victims whose names spelled out the word murder. When that became too difficult, they began counting each murder as a day. This meant to the couple, quote, I will love you forever and a day, end quote. The two broke up shortly after the murders because Gwen wanted to date another nurse at the clinic. She ended up leaving that job and moved to Texas where she worked in the infant ward in a hospital. Fast forward to 1988, Kathy told her ex-husband about the murders and he went to the police. Kathy told police her version of the story, portraying that it was mostly Gwen partaking in the murders. Two victims that were not cremated were exhumed, but unfortunately there was no evidence of homicide but that is common in cases of smothering. The medical examiner ruled the death homicide and both Kathy and Gwen were arrested in December of 1988. Kathy was able to get a plea bargain by claiming Gwen planned and carried out the murders while she only served as a distraction or a lookout. Gwen maintained her innocence, testifying that Kathy played a mind game with her. The jury was ultimately swayed by Gwen's current partner, she told the jury that Gwen admitted all of the murders to her, and even though there was a lack of evidence, Gwen was found guilty. Gwen will serve five life sentences in prison on five counts of murder and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Kathy was charged with one count of second degree murder. She is now a free woman. She was released from prison on January 16th, 2020. Later, there was a book released about this case. Friends and co-workers of Kathy told an entirely different story. Kathy was known to be coercive and seductive, as well as a pathological liar. She enjoyed wreaking havoc in other people's lives. Kathy told her co-workers that she was angry that Gwen was leaving her for another woman, so she would take revenge. So what do you think about this case? Is Gwen really an evil monster, or is Kathy a manipulator? Either way, she's a free woman now. Orville Lynn Majors was a very popular nurse in Clinton, Indiana. He was particularly good with elderly patients who gave him glowing evaluations. Orville left his hospital in Indiana for some time, but when he returned to his post, the death rate of patients spiked significantly. About 26 patients died annually at a 56-bed hospital with a 4-bed intensive care unit. However, when Orville arrived, over 100 patients died a year. The hospital staff started noticing that many more patients were dying at a much more frequent rate. And they also were noticing that Orville was always on staff when patients were dying. The deceased patient's records were looked at by hospital officials and noticed that Orville was on staff on the days of 130 of 147 deaths. The Indiana State Police arrested Orville and he was suspended in pending investigation. The Indiana Nursing Board suspended his license for five years after it was determined he was giving patients an overdose of emergency drugs and working in the ICU without a doctor present. Investigators saw a pattern in the murders. They discovered an average of one death every 23 hours and that a patient in Orville's care was 42 times more likely to die than patients who were with other nurses. Orville was released from prison while his trial was pending, and he made the rounds on several talk shows to proclaim his innocence. Investigators had trouble proving Orville was a killer. 
But once Orville appeared on TV, many families who had patients that died mysteriously reported this to the police. Many families stated that Orville would give the patients an injection, and within minutes they would die, sometimes even before Orville left the room. An EKG specialist had 15 victims' bodies exhumed and was able to determine through testing that seven of the patients had died from lethal injection. Orville was arrested on October 17, 1999 for seven counts of murder, but he was only convicted on six counts of murder. Orville received six terms of 60 years each, which was the maximum Indiana penalty at the time. Judge Ernest Yelton described Orville's crimes as, quote, a parallel of evil at its most wicked, end quote. Orville was being held at Indiana State Prison in Michigan City. He died of heart failure on September 24, 2017, while arguing with correctional staff. Although it's never been proven, investigators believe that Orville was responsible for 130 murders. He often complained to other staff that his workload was too heavy and he couldn't stand his patients that asked too much of him, and so he would ultimately kill them. In the springtime of 2008, DeVita's Lufke Clinic in Texas had a spike in patients becoming mysteriously ill during their treatments. Paramedics were called into the clinic 30 times that April. One patient named Thelma Metcalf had to go to the emergency room several times for receiving too much blood thinner. Several patients went into cardiac arrest, and after Thelma and another patient named Clara Strange died of cardiac arrest, the clinical coordinator started an investigation. On April 28th, there were two inspectors investigating the clinic, and during this time, two more patients passed away from a serious drop in blood pressure. Two patients let the hospital staff know that they witnessed a nurse named Kimberly Clark Snays draw a bleach solution into two syringes and inject the two patients who died. When Kimberly was confronted about this allegation, she claimed that she was cleaning the dialysis machines and that she used the syringes to get a precise amount of bleach in order to clean them. This was against the corporate policy at this clinic. The syringes used on patients tested positive for bleach and Kimberly was arrested. The hospital shut down for two weeks, Kimberly was fired, and her nursing license was suspended. Kim applied to be the receptionist at the clinic she worked at after she was fired. During the investigation, it was revealed Kimberly was present for every incident in where a patient died in April. Her computer was also searched, and it was discovered she googled whether bleach could kill a person. Kimberly was arrested, but she maintained her story that she used the syringes only to measure the bleach because there were no measuring cups available in the clinic. Hospital staff testified that Kimberly had a dislike for several patients, all of whom passed away or suffered from cardiac arrest. It was also said that Kimberly one day went on a smoking break after tending to a patient. A few moments later, the patient started having a heart attack and Kimberly refused to come back inside from her cigarette break and tend to the patient. On March 31, 2012, Kimberly was found guilty of murdering five patients and injuring five others. Prosecutors sought the death penalty, but Kimberly was given five terms of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, plus three 20-year sentences for aggravated assault. Investigators believed that Kimberly was responsible for more murders, but because all of the medical waste has been destroyed, there is no way for them to prove that. During Kimberly's trial, Thelma Metcalf's daughter said, quote, You're nothing more than a psychopathic serial killer. I hope you burn in hell, end quote. So next time one of us goes to the hospital, it's probably a good idea to watch out for our nurses and doctors and ensure that they are giving us the proper medications because you never know who is truly evil. So let me know what you guys thought about this video, if you enjoyed it or not, in the comments down below. I might make this into a series and do these maybe like once or twice a month because when I was researching this, I had no idea there were so many killer nurses and doctors out there. So I thought this could be something that we could talk about every once in a while. And if you guys enjoy it, let me know because I thought it was really interesting and it kind of makes me scared to go to the hospital now. So thank you so much guys for watching and I hope you all have a great day and be safe out there. Bye bye.